sticking to my fingers. Oh, yes, I did. Foolish me. For without love, where in this world would I be? Ye gods of song and dance, must I suffer this? Oh, Mr. Raymond, I'm doing my best. Yes, I know. That's what makes it so pitiful. Oh, now, Mr. Raymond, it's nearly eight o'clock in the morning. Shirley's tired. Aren't I tired? Have I been in bed all night? She can't sing, she can't dance. Take her away. Tell Mr. Raymond you're sorry, girlie. Oh, Mr. Raymond. You dare. One pout and you're out. But, Mr. Raymond... You're out. Oh. You're all out. We don't open the shows up. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Raymond... Yes, you can tell the backers this production is cancelled. Uh, yes, Mr. Raymond. I'll have them telephone your flat. Yes, they can spare their breath. I'll never set foot in the theatre again. I'm going home to bed. But, uh, Mr. Raymond... Uh... All right, everybody back at 11. There's no point your arguing. I wash my hands of all of you. I wash my hands of the theater. I hate the word, I hate the people. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter a monastery. I shall be a holy man. I shall achieve serenity. I said serenity. No, I won't spell it. No, I don't know which monastery, except that it'll be on a rock. And after the course of many years, I shall try to forget the vile yowlings of these fat cats we call sopranos. And those dancers. Grinning, leaping elephants, that's what they are. And the actors. If I see one of them on that rock, I'll throw it at him. Holy man or not. There's a young lady to see you, sir. Oh, uh, tell her I'm out. Uh, she's in, sir. I've got an appointment. I'm Elaine Brett. Who says so? Your office. I haven't got an office. I've just renounced them. I don't blame you. I've had trouble with them, too. They made me wait months for my audition. Audition? <laughs> oh, but I can sing and dance, Mr. Raymond. At least I think I can. And I want you to think I can, too. Just one song and dance, please. Oh, if you insist. Oh, thank you, Mr. Don't Raymond. Don't interrupt. I said that if you insist on singing, go to that door and shout wolf. Shout wolf? Did you call me? Oh, so you're Wolf. What do you want? I don't know. Except that I'm to sing, I think. Not loud, I hope. I got a headache. Oh, you play. Why not? I took lessons. I hope you took lessons. Dancing lessons? That's fine. Let's sing. Oh, dear. I do hope Mr. Raymond isn't asleep. That's all right. You won't wake him. I was the type who would laugh at romance. Called it a lot of chop suey. I was finished with that sort of hooey. But we never learn, do we? My point of view has completely reversed. I find that I'm just as cooey. It's love again, it's love again. I'll shout it from the housetops up above again. That state of sweet inanity that borders on insanity is love again. I feel the urge again to merge again and melodies of love within me surge again. So if I want to rest my chin with passion on a violin, it's love again. Love is the thing that makes a bull and heifer feel just like an airy flipper free. Love is a nest of vest and drink that makes a cockney coster think he's Viennese. It feels like spring again. I'll sing again and be 
just like the vine that has to cling again. So if I wax poetic, be a little sympathetic. It's love again. My pet. Darling of all people, what luck. Who's darling? Don't you know Francine Grenoble? She used to be Raymond Starr before she started dodging mother parts in Hollywood. How's Hollywood? Hollywood. Ooh. So everyone says, you couldn't have come at a better time. You've saved my life. How'd you utterly giddy make it? I was about to enter the convent. Uh, uh, monastery. But now that you're back, I'm unfrocked. You shall go into my new review. No more of these rash youngsters at last to realize it. What's she got that I haven't? Hardening of the arteries. Remember, Francine, the song you sang in our first great success? Remember? Remember? Oh. Oh. My dear, I shall never forget. Uh, Let's have it again. Uh, when you wore a tulip, a sweet yellow tulip, and I wore a big red bow. When you caressed me, twice then heaven blessed me for a blessing. No one. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. But it's definitely your round. Nimble footwork, eh? Looking for this? No, not at all. That's quite all right. I know exactly how you feel. I save string. Besides, I've got one of my own. Um, you a friend of Archie's? Certainly not. You think I do this to a friend? Thank you. Hmm. Let me have a try. Mind your fingers now. Okay. They're very nice fingers. In fact, they're very nice hands. Queer duck, Archie. Awful. Very neatly put. He is awful. And he's got to worry along without a doorknob. I can't work it. Oh, it serves him right. He actually objects to my tap dancing. He says it's noisy. No soul. Not a shred. So you done. Like a gazelle. myself a gazelle. Ah, refreshment. Right, will you? Oh. We've been dancing, boys. 
Do you dance, boys? Not as a rule, sir. But on one occasion, with the aid of six very old-fashioned cocktails and your uncle, I executed, if you will pardon me, sir, a shuffle off to Buffalo. <laughs> Look, won't you come inside and be more comfortable? I'd like to, really. But I must get on. Oh, no, don't. Please. Tomorrow, then. Mm -mm. We could lunch, we should dine, and we must dance. That's very sweet of you. And please don't think I'm standing on ceremony. In my set, a doorknob is always an introduction. Oh. Uh, one day, perhaps. Just one day. Soon. And now, thanks for the drink. And the gazelle on. You simply can't run off this way. In the first place, I'll be terribly lonely. And besides, you're extremely lovely. I beg your pardon, young man. Oh, not you, ma'am. Uh, yes, of course, you. You're lovely. Goodbye. Goodbye? Well, what's your name? Where do you live? Uh, let me pass. Here, here. Walk up. I'm up and I want to get down. Stop that girl. What's the name of the young man in number 67? Mr. Peter Carlton, Miss. Carl. C-A-R-L-P-O-N. Boys, were you ever in love? Once, sir, but nothing came of it. I wasn't firm enough. Just tell them Freddie Rathbun's arrived. <laughs> my hat, my scarf. For your card, sir. Lady Horton is entertaining tonight. Lady Horton is very entertaining any night. And your invitation, if you please, sir. Oh, I'll just slip in and mill around a bit. Lady Horton's drawbridge is always lowered to a rat Thank you, Mr. I won't sign another autograph. Be an ass, you're a celebrity. You've got to. I'm tired of being a celebrity. I want to go home. Well, you can't. <laughs> Hello, Montague. Who's here? Meet T. Rutherford Scarsdale. Paint ceilings. Bedroom ceilings. What for? Well, if you're lying in bed and you've nothing better to do, you can look at the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> Now, uh, when you start painting these ceilings... Hey, what's the idea? Just a few details from the daily record. You keep off his mind. I work for the Tribune, so he belongs to the Tribune. Oh, all right. Where are you going? I want to put that girl on my bedroom ceiling. Well, be careful she isn't a journalist. Here, why should you have exclusive rights? Because he's mine. I made him. Who was he before he appeared in my column? Nobody. Nobody. You go and find a celebrity of your own. But how? I don't know. Why not try the way I do? Make one. Then you're in permanently on the ground floor. That's what I do, Freddie, my boy. That's why my stuff sells and your stuff's rotten. Come on, let's have another drink. Have the record been fools enough to give you your job, Beth? No. A friend of mine's got it, Peter Carlton. But I help him. You help him? Then he's as good as said. Come on, let's go somewhere else and have another drink. Nice parties Lady Horton gives. I thought you were going for tidbits. Well, come along with a story. Who was there? Oh, the usual people. Oh, go to bed. You've got to write that column. The boss will be furious. Yeah. All right, mastermind. Tell me whom to write about. Tell me whom to write about. <laughs> Buy cartons of soda. Now, let's think of someone. Echo answers? Who? What we want to find is a celebrity who will be exclusively ours and get in on the ground floor permanently. A great publicity personality who no one can get at but ourselves. In other words, a scoop. Ooh.
Better still, Peter, this great brain has conceived a great thought. We must invent a celebrity of our own, a child of my imagination, someone who no one can get any news from because there ain't no such person. Now, who can we invent? Echo answers. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Let's invent... Who was the man who went through Asia with an umbrella riding a mock turtle? That's the kind of man we want. Or oh, better still, a woman. Are you taking all this down? What's a yashmak? That's a thingamabob oriental ladies wear over their, what do you call it? This fascinating lady pilots her own airplane from India, Persia, and Arabia to London, and vice versa. A great huntress. Thinks nothing of bagging a tiger or two before breakfast. And what a woman. Alluring, mysterious. Men would go mad over her. Women would swoon with envy. But no one sees this white treasure except her prince lover, the Miraja of, um, the Miraja of what, Freddy? What, Freddy? Oh. The Miraja. Of the oh, the Miraja. Will there be anything else, sir? Uh, yes, boys. No. Hang on to India for me. There. I'll soon find a home for your Miraja. Now then, tell me where I hit, boys. Ooh. Where was it? My tummy, sir. There. The Mirajah of Matami, sir. Good old Indian name, that. Don't be silly. You hit boys. Oh, I'm sorry, boys. Just a slip of the lance. Uh, what's next to your tummy? Mirashah, sir. Ah. The Mirajah of Mirashah. Now, let's see. What's her name? I've got the best woman of her. Nothing like calling a girl Smith. Much travel family, the Smiths. Get into all the best hotels, too. Mm. Smythe. Smythe? Oh, all right, Smythe, Smythe. Mrs. Smythe, Smythe. Freddie, we're the proud parents of a beautiful lady. Are we? I knew I wasn't feeling well. I'm going to bed before we have twins. <laughs> Like old times, having a little zip in the society column. Thanks be for Mrs. Smythe Smythe. She is a one, though. Just shot her 20th tiger. Though how she has time for that. What with a Maharaja in India, a prince in Persia, a sheik in Arabia, and a society reporter in London. Don't you worry, dearie. Your boyfriend's safe enough. He's not my boyfriend. I haven't even heard from him. But he doesn't know where you live. Who knows where Mrs. Smythe Smythe lives? But he finds her when nobody else can. Nobody except that Maharaja of Mirashar. I wonder if your Mr. Carr's never peeped under her yashmak. Why not? Newspaper men have to go everywhere. Fancy sitting in a harem all day with a lace curtain over your face and being waited on hand and foot the unicorns. Not me. I'd be gadding around to smart hotels and parties and getting me picture in the papers. So would I. What a chance wasted. That's what it is, sheer waste. What I couldn't do with her publicity. I wonder if I dare. It's a brainwave. Brixton 234. Yeah? Hello, Cyril. This is Elaine speaking. Listen, this may sound absolutely mad, but you've got to do it for me. Yes, yes, yes. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Imperial Palace tonight at 10 o'clock? Right. But don't you forget to give me the cue. Oh, Bess, 
bad as that? What did you expect? A decoration from the old man for letting the record stealer march on us? I told him I was pulling every string. What did he say? He said the only string that interested him was the one that Carlton pulls. I took up nothing to get some exclusive smide smide new but Tribune away. Now, don't you start any of your old tricks. If you think I'm going to let Carlton take my daily bread out of your mouth... Hello? Bill on the wire. Oh, him. He's never given me a good tip yet. There's something phony about this smide smide woman. I wonder if you're right. You've never known me wrong. Hello? Yes? Yeah? That's fine. Thanks for the tip. What's on? Dinner at the Imperial Palace. Who's there? Mrs. Smythe Smythe and no cracks. <laughs> Madame Smythe Smythe, she's arrived. Oh, why are you fidget, Francois? Why is everyone fidget? Have not I, Honoré, Georges, Pierre, Ria, Savran, Descartes, not received kings, princes, nobles, American gangsters, even American film stars? Eh? Bon. My prayer, it was written in the stars. You are here by my side at last. Like the throb of a drum, you awaken something from the dim and mysterious past. Like a dream of a sleep yesterday. I was destined for you when the pyramids were new and the glory of the east was in sway. And we still will be one when the pyramids are done, when they crumble away in decay. For a voice in my soul seems to say, We have met before a thousand years ago. Queen in some far off scene of splendor, and I was a slave who willingly gave my heart in surrender. We have loved before in some forgotten age on some distant shore. Somewhere, somewhere. 
man. Why were you not at the Imperial Palace last night? General Montague was, and he got an interview with Mrs. Smythe Smythe. What? It's impossible. Impossible. You read the Tribune, you'll see how impossible it is. Did you know that she lived on llama broth and curry dolphin? This beautiful was shot 20 times, did a rumba, had the whole of the Imperial Palace in a frenzy of excitement. It was her first appearance in public, and you, of all people, were scooped. Why, it's preposterous. She couldn't have been there because... Uh... Well, she was. What are you going to do about it? Find out who's crazy. Me or Montague? Boys, we've been outraged. Your master and I have been robbed while we slept. Indeed, sir. I didn't hear anyone in the night, sir. Oh, not here, you fool, at the Imperial Palace. What's Mr. Carlton going to say when he hears that Mrs. Smythe Smythe is no longer a bird of flight? Boys? The lady has lit somewhere and laid us an egg. Mr. Smythe Smythe was at the Imperial, Imperial Palace, Palace last night. Oh. Ah. Uh. Peter, this imposter must be unyashmacked. There's no such word. Of no such person. How do you know? What do you mean, how do I know? Aren't we the father and the... And the father... Oh, I see what you mean. Maybe there is such a lady. Yes, and then what? Peter? What is it? You want to go to the Imperial Palace and face her, even if she's shot 40 tigers. Oh, but... I'll show her she can't stampede Freddy Rathbun. You know my name. Why shouldn't I? Mrs. Smythe Smythe stops here, Mrs. Smythe Smythe stops there, Mrs. Smythe Smythe stops at nothing. All by Mr. Peter Carlton, price at one penny. I suppose explanations are expected. But what about an explanation from you? Well, here's one. Are you sure? Oh, this is marvelous seeing you again. What's the idea? Merely a great one. You were printing reams about the real Mrs. Smythe Smythe, and she didn't seem to give a hang. Well, I did. I wanted publicity. Why? I wanted to create a stir and then expose myself. Hmm. Just before going quietly with the police? No, just prior to going noisily with the show. After I was discovered, I hoped some manager would take advantage of the publicity and give me a job under my own name. After all, you are the only person in London who knows the real Mrs. Smythe Smythe, aren't you? Hmm. If anything happens, I'll take full responsibility. What do you say? Hazel Brown. I beg your pardon. Your eyes. Hazel Brown. They're beautiful. I wondered about them. I remembered your face and your hair and everything else. But why you ever thought of covering that lovely face with this ridiculous thing, I'll never know. Then you won't let me go on being Mrs. Smythe Smythe? Well... Then you will? Oh, thank you. Love again, it's love again. A house is on the house of the top of the king. The taste of sweet anemone, the borders on eternity. It's love again. I feel the urge again, to merge again. And melodies of love within me search again. So if I want to wreck my team with passion on the violin, it's love again. Love is a stimulation feeling that will lift you to the ceiling when you're young. Love is the thing that makes a gossip writer look up words of lighter doesn't know. 
It feels like spring again. I'll sing again. And feel just like the vine that has to sing again. So if I was so well. What's your name? Elaine Bradford. Well, what about Mrs. Smythe Smythe? She is Mrs. Smythe Smythe. Who? Elaine Bradford. The girl in the hall. What are you talking about? She has the most beautiful hazel brown eyes. Fine. I send you to stamp out a menace and you come back here mooning about eyes. Don't you like the job? I love her. And all she wants is to get on as a dancer. Tomorrow, London will learn that Mrs. Smythe Smythe is an accomplished dancer, a world-renowned expert in the temple dances of the Far East. That should help put her on her feet, Freddy. Peter, there are four million women in London. Why must you fall in love with a lady who wears a yashmak and has two big sticks of dynamite clutched in her hot little hands? Oh, but Freddy, her... I know, her hazel brown eyes. How many has she got? Two at the most, all right? You gain two eyes and lose your job, invite exposure, face J. Edgar at his Durlandus, and start dodging creditors again. Oh, but think, Freddy. Think! You asked Freddy Rathman to think. I am thinking the most horrible things of love and jail. Goodbye, Romeo. When Mrs. Smythe Smythe arrives for lunch, I want the manager to give her this card and bring her up to my suite. Mrs. Smythe Smythe, the Maharaj of Mirashah salutes you. <laughs> yes, of course. I have been reading the newspapers. Oh, how nice. Our names have been coupled. Is that nice? Oh, oh, that was a mistake. They meant the Maharaja of... Uh, well? The Maharaja of... Uh, Urcha. Maharaja of Urcha? Surely a lotus blossom would not defile her beauty with the slimy touch of a bullfrog. Oh, there was nothing like that. There was no love in your heart. I love nobody. Oh, gods of my ancestors, place the heart of this fair lotus blossom in these hands of mine. I'd better be going. Oh, those little hands, like fluttering birds, caught in a hunter's snare. I've got to have my hair done at four. Those eyes, deeper than the Shalimar, with ever-changing light, like wind across the jungle grasses. And the fitting of the dressmaker. Show me, show me that face and open up the gates of heaven. I'm afraid I can't wait. Oh, show me thy naked face. Oh. For as the great poet Taj Mahal has said, Chotapeg, Chotapeg, Tiffin Men Sahib. Punjab, Punjab, Chakka Salam. How beautiful. You speak Hindustani. Only in India. Let me have one more look at thy divine face. One more? We've met? At the doorbar, don't you remember? Was I there? You favor me with a glimpse beneath my yashmak. Did I? Goodbye. Oh, see, I am my slave, my slave. One look, one look. You might find me changed. Changed? That eternal face could never change. Puna, Puna. You are not Mrs. Smythe Smythe. <laughs> Quick, a whiskey and soda. What is it, boys? A potentate, uh, sir. He wants a whiskey and soda. Well, give him one. And a sandwich, too, poor devil. Did you say a potentate? A, a sort of a mirage, sir. What? Not old Mirashar himself. The thought had occurred to me, sir. Oh, don't let him in. Tell him. Uh, tell him I'm out. Look out! What? Hey, what is this? Look here, sir. Uh, uh, can't we talk this over, sir? I, I should say not. Oh, it's you. Of course it's me. Are you crazy or am I? Uh, <laughs> and we thought you were the Mirage of Mirashar. So I am. <laughs> I was. I've just come from the Imperial Palace. Oh, so that's your trick. I didn't hurt her. I just sent her about her business in a nice way. You're a fine pal. I promised that girl I'd let her carry on. All she wants is a chance. Who are you phoning? Elaine, I'm going to beg your pardon. 
That's great. I borrow five pounds from a pal I've been saving up for a rainy day and go oriental for you. Hello, Elaine. This is Peter. Look, I'm off. Hello. 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 Sorry, old boy. I, I didn't know you had it that bad. By the courtesy of Mr. Peter Carlton. A fat lot of courtesy in that. It was a dirty trick. Mrs. Smythe Smythe has everything. Probably never had to go without a thing in her life. And I give her a chance to help someone. Elaine Bradford. Has Mrs. Smythe Smythe ever flung herself hoarse? Down till she dropped to try and convince some idiot that without breach of promise cases, jewel robberies, and preferring to breakfast alone, one might still have the makings of a star. Well, I have. For months, for months, for months. <laughs> oh, no, please. Please don't. I've told you that's fool Freddy's fault. He calls himself a thinker. And that's what he thought of. That's all right. It's off my chest. Oh, but... And tell your friend, Mrs. Smythe Smythe, that I didn't disgrace her. And I promise I won't use her name anymore. Wait a minute. Yes, uh, is that you, Carlton, my boy? I should like you to do me a little favor. Edgar. I've got a few instructions for you, Carlton. My wife is giving a party. Oh. What's that? I said, oh, uh, how nice. It's to be a little uh, oriental party with an Indian motif. My wife is turning the house into an eastern bazaar. Now, do you think you could manage to get... Edgar. These are your instructions. Yes, sir. You must get Mrs. Smythe Smythe as the guest of honor. Guest of honor? Oh, but that's impossible. Uh, you see, she never goes out socially. It'll mean a great deal to me in the future. And it'll mean your future job, young man. I'm sacked. Don't be silly. You can get her there. I can't. She's in India. You might get her here in time. What takes the show? Well, she'd still be in India. That's what of use Mrs. Smythe Smythe being to you. Mrs. Smythe Smythe is dead. Don't be funny. She was never born. What? A child of my imagination. And Freddy's the father. Well, Mother, you must settle down and have another family. Wait, we'll adopt you. So there isn't a Mrs. Smythe Smythe. And now that you need one to keep your job, you come running to me. Well, guess again. Oh, wait. That wasn't nice. I know. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Well, you should be. After all, you know I'm in love with you. Well, you haven't shown it yet. There, that shows you. Doesn't show a thing. Doesn't? I must be losing my grip. No, thanks. I've just had one. Look here, Elaine. I'm not trying to do this for myself alone. It's a cinch to help you along with your little scheme. And after that, I thought we'd walk around or sit around or dance around. Oh, so you were planning all that, were you? Of course I was planning all that. Didn't I tell you I loved you? Don't you think I want to sit around and dance around too? Then you do love me? But all I'm good for is to be Mrs. Smythe Smythe, as you decide. Then you don't love me? No. But Mrs. Smythe Smythe will go to that party. And don't blame me if anything awful happens. See you in the papers. Wait. Wait, Wait. Elaine. Come on, sir, take it, please. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh, it's terrific. What a get-up. I'm afraid oh, you won't be seeing it much longer because it's coming off. I'm not going. Uh, oh, but you can't back out now. Oh, I can't, can't I? If you can spring surprises like this on me. Colonel Bertrand Edgerton of the Six Lancers, who has just returned from India, is being entertained tonight by Mrs. J. Edgar Derlin. The occasion will mark the first meeting of the Colonel and the fascinating Mrs. Smythe Smythe. 
was the other guest of honor. It is anticipated that these two authorities on the Far East should find much in common. You read very nicely. Berlin sprung it on me this morning. I've been thinking about it all day. I'm Freddy. Oh, Freddy the Mirage. This is no time for grudges. Let's be friends. How can I be friends with people who think nothing of showering mirages and kernels on me? What's next? A herd of elephants? Don't you worry about that colonel. As soon as we find out where he's stopping, I'll put a spoke in his wheel. We left boys phoning every club and hotel in London. It's no use. I don't know what's going to happen to the colonel. But I do know what's going to happen to me. I'll take it. It's very likely boys. Yes? Yes. Good work, boys. The colonel's staying at the dismounted cavalry club. I'm off. And when you meet the colonel, relax. It'll be me. There you are. Everything under control. What are you planning to do with the colonel? Add kidnapping to your other parlor tricks? <laughs> Leave that to Freddy. What a colonel he'll make. You two will have a grand time together. You know I wouldn't do anything to get you in a jam in there. You don't have to. I do all right myself. Then you've got to stop. I won't have you getting in jams. Do you really think I'll be all right if I go? You'll be just as safe as you are right now. That's just what I thought. I don't know why I'm doing this. But I'll take a chance on you and go. Oh, don't lock up yet. You know you have a very nice face. Do you think that very nice face would give me a kiss? Time for just one before closing. I'm looking for Colonel Edgerton. How can you tell, uh, that is, could you tell me which is he? Colonel Edgerton's left for the evening. He hasn't started for Mrs. Derlands. No, I believe he's planned to make several calls on his way, but I couldn't tell you where. See those ladies running about? What an echo when they shout, say Tony's in town. Hey, Tony's in town. Everybody's spreading the news and running for their dancing shoes. Says Tony's in town. Yes, Tony's in town. Can he dance? I'll say he can. When it comes to dancing, he's the international man. All night long the party is on and they won't stop till break of dawn. Cause Tony's in town. Tony's in town. Look at the way that he does it Ain't he a graceful gazelle? Why Mr. and Mrs. Ormiston Stedley Mr. Peter Carlton Hello, oh, Carlton, my boy How do you do, sir? Awful, isn't it? Oh, it is a bit startling Oh, Mr. Mr. Carlton, do tell me you think I've outdone myself I so want Mrs. Smythe Smythe to look at all this and then turn round and say, India. Yes, well, I certainly do hope she thinks of it. But when Mrs. Smythe Smythe gets violently homesick, she says the strangest thing. Mrs. Smythe Smythe! <laughs> Has the Colonel arrived yet? Not yet. I hope Mrs. Smythe Smythe likes him. Very nice fellow, I hear. One of the best tiger shots in all India. Uh, outside of Mrs. Smythe Smythe, of course. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to ask Mrs. Smythe Smythe to honor us by demonstrating the rare temple dances of the East, in which, as you know, she is a world-renowned expert. What kind of a dance did you say? Temple. Well, what's that? I don't know. That's just this one. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, so does everyone else. Oh, I was so sure you wouldn't mind. Oh, but I, I, I have no music. Oh, yes, you have. 
<laughs> oh, but I, I don't think they would know the sort of music that I would have to have. Oh, yes, they do. They've been rehearsing all day. Oh, but I, uh, I couldn't dance without, uh, <laughs> without. Uh... Oh, but I shouldn't want you to dance without. I've got a costume for them. I thought of everything. Mr. and Mrs. Hill Mitchelson. Mr. and Mrs. Hill Mitchelson. Colonel Edgerton. Colonel Edgerton had just arrived. Oh, oh, there must be some mistake. Thank you. Mr. Freddie Rathbone. Mr. Freddie Rathbone. Colonel Edgerton of the Six Lancers, Mrs. My Smile. How do you do? How do you do? Permit me, madam. I know you probably have a lot to say to one another, but don't monopolize her, Colonel. <laughs> what a grand makeup. What? Well, I must say, you look marvelous. Jolly good of you. You know, you look very nice to yourself. How much longer do you think we'll have to stay here? Well, I think something could be arranged. No, thanks. It's all right. There's no one listening. You can speak freely. I think we might find a quieter spot than this. The quieter, the better. I like a woman who takes her fences straight. It's all right. Relax. There's no one looking. You say it's a bit public. What? But, God, madam, you're the woman after my own heart. It's too bad I never ran across you, did you? Where do you spend most of your time when you were there? Oh, down near the bottom, hmm? where it comes to a point. Now, I'm, I'm afraid I must say goodbye. Not before I've kissed the hand that killed 20 cats. Kill them? 
how I love them. I used to have two sleeping at the foot of my bed. You know, it's all very well for you to read it like that. But you make my record of 14 tigers unworthy of the six lances. Tigers? Oh, you, you mean tigers. Oh, yes, tigers. Now, Mrs. Smythe, Smythe, about sights. Of London or India. Guns. Do you prefer a globe or a telescope sight? Well, it, it all depends on which part of the animal I'm shooting at, if you please. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that Mrs. Smythe Smythe and Colonel Edison, two of the greatest marksmen of the Orient, will show us how they bring down those big, bad cats. Hmm. I didn't shoot better after a few chota pigs. Certainly. <laughs> and anybody who is gun shy must shut their eyes and hold their ears. Well, madam, we're on safari now. We've started, eh? No, no! Over here! Oh, you hit a beater! This is my smile! Oh, no, no! Over here! Man, madam, you've only winged him! Let's get her out of here before they ask her to do the Indian rope trick. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a charming evening. Calling me a taxi. I'm going home. Oh, not yet. I'm tired. Well, then come on up to my place and sit down. No. Well, then we'll go somewhere else. You can't go home yet. Can't I? Well, in the first place, there's tomorrow's column. Now tell me, uh... Blaine, why won't you let me kiss you? So that you can put that in tomorrow's column? What do you mean by letting that old murderer frighten me to death? He nearly shot me. You nearly shot me? Too bad I didn't. Oh. If you'd wounded me just a little, would you have nursed me back to health? No, I'd have brushed off on my shooting. No, you wouldn't. You'd have sat down and cried your eyes out. Well, at least I'd have been sitting down. Right. I have a country seat near here. Take me to it. Like a shot. Oh, what a night. <laughs> we might be miles away in a jungle. Don't say jungle. Oh, I'm sorry. I merely begun... Or Ghana, or Tiger, or India, or anything to do with that beastly woman. Mrs. Smythe Smythe. My Mrs. Smythe Smythe. Your Mrs. Smythe Smythe. This is all yours now. I've finished with her. Oh, my feet. Pale hands I love beside the Shalimar. That's pretty. What's it from? Indian love lyrics. Oh, now look here. Oh. She's smiling now. Now she's frowning. He's shaking his finger at her. She snapped at it. She's got up to move away. He's pulling her back. She's up again. She's down. He's up again. He's down. Save by the bell. That boy needs help in the next round. A nice time to blow in. It's the turn I'm going to blow. Good night. Here, wait a minute. You can't go to bed. Listen, my boy, I'll put out the light and be in bed before the room gets dark. No, you don't. Henceforth, you'll be known as Lucky Raymond, the man who was born with a horseshoe in his mouth. You have a new star. Have I? She can sing like an angel, dance like a fairy, and you ought to see her legs. Ought her. And I found her. Is she engaged? Has she got a name? Name? Have you ever heard of Mrs. Smythe Smythe? All right, dear, if you say so. From now on, I'm going to be me. And we'll send Mrs. Smythe Smythe back to where she came from. If I'm going to be a sensation, I'll be it as Elaine Bradford. You tried that before. Well, I can try it again. And you'll make good, too. Who knows, maybe someday you'll be able to dance as well as me. You know, Peter, I believe I'm beginning to like you. Thank you, Mrs. Smythe Smythe. Who? Sorry. Miss Elaine Bradford, now and forever. Oh, 
Hold it. Look who's here. Woman, do your stuff. Mr. Raymond, you really want me to sing to you? I should be charmed. And if you think I'm good, you'll give me a chance? Like a... Oh, don't say it. Sit down. I wear a cloak of mystery, but darling, in reality, there's not one thing you can conceal. Beneath my outward attitude, you'll find I'm really in a mood rest, romantic and real. Got to dance, got to sing, got to have my little thing, got to dance my way to heaven right in your arms. Got to hum, got to shout, got to kick my heels about. Got to dance my way to heaven right in your arms. I feel as high tonight as any kite, and I'll soon be flying out of sight. It's no spark for two big nights, it's a great big stick of dynamite. Got to kiss and be kissed, cross the others off my list. Cause I can't resist your irrepressible, sweet caressable charm. Got to dance my way to heaven in your arms. Got to dance, got to sing. Got to have my little thing, got to dance my way to heaven right in your arms. Got to hum, got to shout, got to kick my heels apart, got to dance my way to heaven right in your arms. I feel as high tonight as any kind, and I'll soon be flying out of sight. It's no spark, the tropic night, it's a great big stick of dynamite. Got to kiss and be kissed, cross the others off my list, because I can't resist your irrepressible. Sweet caressable charm. Got to dance my way to heaven in your arms. got it all. Didn't I tell you? Books, talent, and a name. And you're going to see that name spread across the front of my theater in letters that high. Mrs. Smythe Smythe. Oh. 
Mrs. Smythe Smythe. Why should the record have exclusive news of you? That's, That's right. right. Why should it? Yes, the readers of the Tribune are theatre girls, you know. It might be bad for business if they got the wrong impression. I'm sure Mrs. Smythe Smythe will treat all you gentlemen of the press on an equal footing. Shall we say tomorrow? How about a little drink, gentlemen? Hmm? Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Our pal Montague. What again? Do you realize you'll be in Dutch with Derland again unless we can choke off this competition? You're telling me. He wouldn't even print a line about the end of the world if he didn't have it exclusive. Turn that mob loose on me and Mrs. Smythe Smythe will be about as exclusive of a Hollywood party. Oh, I've got it. Write tomorrow's news yesterday and make it come true today. What? It's quite simple. I think out what you do. Peter writes it. Then you do it. In that way, we can always keep a jump ahead of the other newspapers. Well, Mr. Thinker, and what do I do? Daring exploits, that's what you do. Even if I break my neck, I suppose. Yes, I'm even prepared to risk that. Mrs. Smythe Smythe was riding on a camel in the row this morning. Yes, so Peter Carlton said in the record. Ago. I know what I'm talking about. I've had a man tailing. Well, if the record printed it first, then someone's a witch. No. Yeah, that settles it. I'm going to look after this myself. I'm going to stick by that woman's side day and night. Please. Yes, we'll see who's first home with a washing next time. <laughs> Not half bad, but the next time... There won't be any next time. There wouldn't have been at this time if I'd known anything about it. Then you didn't. No, that... So you wrote the article? Yeah. That was Mrs. Smythe's wife's last stunt. Oh, but we've got a great write-up already written for your next stunt. Yeah. Obituaries don't interest me. Oh, but I know this one, and it isn't dangerous. No, from now on, the only public appearance of Mrs. Smythe's wife will be behind the footlights. For the rest of the time, I'm me. Oh, but don't be silly, Elaine. Miss Bradford, for you. It falls to the Tribune to expose the greatest hoax practiced upon the public in recent years. That's a lot. 
I'll get it set up. Give it to me. Yes, that's pretty good. Front page stuff. And how? Aren't you going to use it? Oh, yes. I'm going to use it.
Congratulations, Elaine Bradford. Oh, so that's why you look like the cat that's eaten the canary. Not eaten it, just caught it. And now that you've got it, I suppose you'd like to play with it a little. Well, go ahead. Well? It's up to you whether this goes into tomorrow's paper. What's the if? Merely that Smythe Smythe news comes first to me and not to Peter Carlton. Come and see me after the show. I shall expect my first big Smythe Smythe news tonight. So think first. What does that bird of ill omen want? Montague knows everything. What? If I don't give him the exclusive dope on Mrs. Smythe Smythe, he's going to publish an expose. You mustn't do anything that'll cost you a big chance. I don't care about the show, but I'm not going to let Peter down. Peter doesn't really need Mrs. Smythe Smythe anymore. He's on his way to bigger things with Durland than mere society reporting, and he's going to keep on if I know anything about it. You don't think Peter would like to hold down a job under those conditions? How do you think I'd feel if he lost it? Please, Freddy, for once in your life, be a thinker. Think what you like, but don't say anything. Peter mustn't know anything about this. Oh, lady! All the boys out front are thinking up a new word for sensation. Where do you see the papers? Where do you see mine? I don't want to see the papers. I hate the papers. What? Mrs. Smythe Smythe reaches a new high and she doesn't care? I'm not even sure I want to be Mrs. Smythe Smythe anymore. <laughs> well, you certainly picked a dandy time to change your mind. What's the idea? Oh, I'm just fed up with the whole thing. You can't spend your whole life at a fancy dress party. There's a girl for you. She wants to be, she is, and then she doesn't want to be. Well, let me know if you change your mind. Peter. Freddy. Fifteen minutes to call the judge finishing. Now what? Leave that to me. There's just one thing to do, and I'm afraid I'm going to do it. The record? I'm speaking for Mr. Peter Carlton. Something for the stock press. No other paper's got it yet. Mrs. Smythe Smythe has walked out in the middle of her first night performance. If anything happens to that girl, I'll sock you for not telling me about Montague. Well, let's find him. By the time this reaches you, I shall be well on my way to a remote destination. I have received the summons which I cannot deny, and my public life must end. A thousand apologies. Signed, Mrs. Smythe Smythe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I regret, but it would be useless to continue with tonight's performance. Your money will be refunded to you at the box office.
happiness too was slipping through my fingers like golden sands right through my hands but I woke in time and I saved my prize yet though love is mine I tremble when I realize a million at love was slipping through my fingers Gotta dance, gotta sing, gotta have my little thing. Bradford. C-A-R-F-P-O-N. <laughs>